The film begins with this singer called Aline, who is working on a new song. At that time, she asks her music producer, Puhun, to find a demo for her album. But suddenly, Puhun's assistant, Yi Chi, finds a mysterious CD with some songs sent to their company. Aline listens to it and likes it, but they don't Kino who sent the CD or who owns the song. Now the song's lyrics were written by Cream and the music by Kei, but there's no info about who sent it. Puhun, Kinu, Cream, and Tei, but sadly, they both aren't around anymore. Kii passed away three years ago, and Cream took out of her own life because Kii left her. So to figure out who owns the song, Puhund and his assistants start investigating. They search everywhere for clues. Eventually, they meet a photographer named Cindy. She had an exhibition about Tei, but she's keeping some of his stuff a secret. Yi Chi thinks Cindy might be hiding something about the song's copyright. So she sneaks into Cindy's office and finds KDI's things in a big diary. Turns out, TEI's life gets tough when his dad gets sicky with leukemia. They're struggling to take care of him, and things get even worse when they get into a car accident. Then carefully, KDI and his dad survive, but sadly, three other people in the accident don't make it. This accident makes KDI's dad feel really guilty, and his health gets worse. Plus, the families of the other drivers want TEI to pay them money, but he's just a student and can't afford it. His mom works is far away, and it's still not enough to help. In that moment, TEI starts feeling like he the world is ignoring him and his problems. But then, something strange happens. A girl named Song Yuan, also Kinana's cream, enters his life in an unusual way. Kia finds out she's a new student in his class, and she's really fierce. She's even attacked KDI once, but she didn't seem to care about getting in trouble. Life at school gets pretty hectic for Tei because Cream Kaib's bothering him in different ways. But he doesn't want to fight her because she's a girl. Then, one day, Cream overhears Tei talking to his dad in the hospital while he's working part-time at a minimar kayak. At that time, Cream Kingu knew that Tei was in a tough spot. Because of that, she managed to control her emotions and act well. In return, Kei gave her a free drinky and advised her to take Kei it easy because fighting was exhausting. Curious about TDI's dad's illness, Cream askeed what it was. She promised not to hurt him again if he told her. Key's response left Cream speechless. Eventually, she left, typing her promise not to harm him. Now back he again. Suddenly, Cindy came to her office and discovered her office had been broken in by Yi Chi. Then she report Yi Chi to the police. At that time, Yi Chi tried to explain that she hadn't stolen anything and was just reading a diary. Soon after, Pu Han arrived and resolved the situation. He assured Cindy he'd compensate her if anything was missing. At night, Pu Hun couldn't stay with Ki, so he ended up at Yi Chi's house, where she lived with her only son. Yi Chi had secretly taken KDI's diary and continued reading it, hoping to find clues about copyright. Back again to the diary. So, when TEI's father received a prison sentence and was expected to pass away soon, KDI's mother didn't see it as bad news. She thought her husband had suffered enough due to his illness. This deeply disappointed Tei, as he realized his mother had been secretly involved with another man all along. Once Tei left his mom, he bumped into Cream, who was going after his dad's girlfriend. Things got messy, and they both ended up at the police station. It turns out, Cream's aunt was there too, and to Kei's surprise, she was related to the people involved in an accident caused by his dad. That's when T.I. learned that Cream's parents and sister were the accident victims. Cream had keen on Kei's identity from the beginning, and had even come to his school to get back at him. But when she realized T.I. was going through a tough time too, she dropped her revenge plan. There, T.I. said sorry for everything and promised to pay for the damages bit by bit. A few days later, T.I.'s dad passed away. The upcoming legal battles were overwhelming, especially when his mom decided to leave him. At that time, she suggested selling the house to cover the costs and save the rest for Kiai's education. Kiai was devastated and cried, but he also had a secret that he had leukemia, just like his dad. He kept it to himself because he was scared of being abandoned. The next day, Kiai decided to throw a party at his house with his school friends before selling it. Cream, who showed up at the party, revealed that it was her birthday and asked Kiai to grant her a wish. Not long after, Cream came to Kiai's house and asked if she could live with him as her birthday wish. She came to the house was being sold to compensate for her family's death, but she preferred to live there with Kiai. 
During Cream's birthday celebration, she made three wishes. One of them, surprisingly, was for Kiyai's family to come back. Kiyai -e. couldn't expect it to come true so quickly when Cream said they were now a family. After that, Kiyai and Cream lived together, going to school, studying, laughing, and crying together. They even graduated from school and went to the same university. Their closeness sparked feelings between them, but they were both afraid of rejection. Then, Kiyai -e decided to express his feelings with a letter and an ice cream shaped necklace during a beach vacation, hoping to make Ki that beautiful moment last forever. But suddenly, Ti had a relapse of leukemia just before he could confess his feelings to Cream. He fainted while riding a motorcycle, and the hospital doctor advised him to undergo more tests. At that moment, Cream held him tightly and cried, worried about him being unconscious for so long. Seeing her cry, Ki realized he needed someone to protect him and keep him from crying. While reading it, Yi Chi felt really sad for Ti, especially when she learned about his tough past, including being abandoned by his mother. This sympathy came from her own experience as a single mom with a son who had heart disease. She couldn't imagine giving up on her son, who relied on her completely. The next day, Pu Hun found KDI's mother on social media and, along with Yi Chi, tried to get information about copyright issues. Ki's mother, however, didn't know anything about it. Yi Chi, overcome with emotions, blamed her for leaving her son. There, Ti's mother explained that taking care of a family member with cancer is incredibly difficult. The uncertainty, endless medical bills, and hospital expenses made her feel trapped in a world of sadness. Even when she found out her son had the same disease as his father, she couldn't change the situation and had to let go. Yi Chi regrets that Ti's mother doesn't realize she's her son's only hope for life. But Yi Chi understands her suffering because she's in a similar situation. Her own son has a serious heart disease, and chances of recovery are slim. However, Yi Chi Kai keeps fighting because she believes it's her duty as a mother. In an unexpected turn of events, Yi Chi's son secretly uses a dating app to find a boyfriend for his mom. At first, Yi Chi gets angry, thinking her son is too young for this. But then, she hears something heart-wrenching. Her son realizes how dangerous his illness is, always wondering if he'll recover or not. Since there's no cure, he wants to make Yi sure his mom will be taken care of. Hearing that, Yi Chi hugs her son and apologizes. The next day, Pu Hun brings KDI's diary and reads it. The diary tells about how he hides his worsening health from Cream, recalling a dark Yi tragedy from the past. He knows he's Cream's only family now, and he doesn't want to make her sad. Despite feeling like he, he's been handed a death sentence and forbidden to love, Kiyai prays for more time to find the right person to care for Cream. After college, Kiyai got a job at a record company as a music composer, and Cream joined as a lyricist. Their journey wasn't easy, as they had to meet the demands of Bonnie, the main singer at the company. There, Cream patiently dealt with Bonnie's constant song lyric changes, even though it got tough. Kiyai Ki knew about Cream's difficulties and tried to comfort her, convincing her to overcome this obstacle. Eventually, Cream managed to meet Bonnie's demands and earned her trust for future songwriting. She happily accepted the opportunity, seeing it as a step forward in her career, and got to keen a Bonnie better. During one incident, CEI met a keen-hearted dentist named Yu Sen, who cared deeply for others. Yu Sen took care of Kiyai when he passed out and even waited for him to wake Yi up. Kiyai felt that Yu Sen could be the right person for Cream. Yu Sen, the son of a dental clinic director, was set to take Yi over his father's business soon. Fate led him to meet Cindy, the photographer mentioned earlier in the story. He fell in love with her at first sight and approached her. After they realized their feelings for each other, they started dating and lived happily. Yu Sen is a great support for his girlfriend Cindy in her photography journey. He's even willing to buy expensive camera lenses and finance her exhibition space. Cindy is surprised by this generous help and is very thankful. However, Yu Sen's father doesn't approve of their relationship. He has a different perspective on art and isn't fond of Cindy's free-spirited lifestyle. However, Yu Sen stands his ground and eventually convinces his father to take their relationship more seriously. At that time, Cindy accepts Yu Sen's proposal, and their love deepens. When Cindy is nominated for an International Photography Award, Yu Sen tries to impress his father with her achievements, but his father ignores her. Cindy feels devastated when her future in-laws underestimate her hard work and dedication. The challenges continue as Cindy discovers Yu Sen dating another woman, breaking her heart. 
This situation triggers her dark eye side, and she's willing to do anything to gain recognition from her future in-laws. She even gets tempted by a jury member who promises her the winning position. In the end, Cindy gets what she wanted, but it doesn't bring her happiness. Once, KDI told Cream that she should find a good man and marry him. Cream replied, he's the one who married her. But KDI explained that good men have jobs, can cook out well, want to take care of their families, and most importantly, are healthy. Tidai tried to introduce Cream to Yusen by inviting him to a party at his worky place. He pretended to thank Kai Yusen for his past help. Soon after, Yusen came to the party where he met Cream. Kia did everything he could to give them some alone time to get to Kino each other, even though it occurred to him because he had to let go of the woman he loved. After that, he quietly left them, bearing all the pain. Turns out the meeting that night opened Cream's heart, and she started showing interest in the young dentist trying to get to Kino and better. Yusen, engaged to someone else, tried to restrain himself, but it didn't seem to deter Cream. Yusen's relationship with his fiancée eventually fell apart when an anonymous person sent a photo of Cindy, suggesting she was often meeting other men. At that time, Cindy made it clear that she didn't love the man she was seeing cause it was just part of her job to build relationships. But Yusen couldn't accept it and felt betrayed. Then, Cindy brought up Yusen's meeting with another woman a while back. There he explained that it was a blind date set up by his father, but he firmly rejected the woman. Cindy eventually discovered that Kei was the one who had disrupted her engagement, and she was furious. Kei had no choice but to reveal his intentions to her and explain that he didn't have much time to live. After apologizing, Kei desperately confessed that the girl he liked loved Yusen, believing that Yusen was the right man for Cream. So he tried to break up Cindy's engagement. Cindy understood KDI's feelings and promised to end things with Yusen, but on one condition that she wanted to hold an exhibition about death and desire. Ki knowing that Kei would soon pass away, she wanted to make Ki him the subject of her photography worky, even though it might sound crazy. Hearing that, KDI agreed. Through this meeting, Cindy got to Kino TDI better and kept some of his personal items, including a diary that told his life story. On the other hand, Cream and Yusen were getting closer opening up their hearts to each other, and accepting their feelings. Meanwhile, TDI kept pushing Cream to get married quickly, which left her wondering why he was so insistent. Kei explained that as she got older, she needed someone to be with her. Cream asked if Kei would leave her someday, a question that deeply saddened him because he key knew he would indeed leave her. The next day, after meeting Yusen's father, who accepted him warmly, Cream decided to marry Yusen right away. At that moment, Kei felt a mix of happiness and sadness upon hearing the news of Yusen's proposal. Cream enthusiastically tried on wedding dresses, with Kei reluctantly donning groom's attire. They captured that moment, and for a while, Kei felt happiness, but he soon left Cream, Kei knowing that happiness would only remain a distant hope. As time passed, Kei walked Cream down the aisle as her guardian, reluctantly letting her go to the man she loved. He I felt like he, he no longer had any responsibilities, and not long after that, he passed away after being missing from the hospital for several days. After reading many of KDI's life stories, Pu Hun realized that there was a profound love behind the mysterious song he composed. Pu Hun began trying to find the people TEI and Cream and met, hoping to uncover copyright clues. In the process, he grew closer to Yi Chi and bonded with her only son. At that time, Pu Hun started showing care towards the hardworking single mom, who tirelessly worked key to cover medical expenses. One day, Pu Hun invited Di Chi and her son on a vacation while also searching for Bonnie, a singer Cream had met before. However, their search didn't give any results, but the journey strengthened their relationship. Then, tragedy struck Yi when Yi Chi's son's heart disease shows up, and he was rushed to the hospital. He was old enough to understand his health condition, and asked Pu Hunt to take care of his mom when he was gone. Her son realizes how dangerous his illness is more worried about his mom's sadness than his own safety. This statement deeply saddened Pu Hunt, and unbecane announced to them, Yi Chi overheard it, breaking her heart. Despite medical efforts, they couldn't save Yi Chi's son, who was declared dead. His passing left Yi Chi overwhelmed with grief, feeling like he her world had crumbled. Pu Hunt did his best to support Yi Chi, who gradually accepted reality, and in the end, they both found love in each other. One day, Pu Hun discovered that not long after T.I. passed away, Cream disappeared, and there were rumors that she took I her own life at sea. 
However, Bonnie denied this and decided to reveal the hidden truth. It turns out that for the past three years, Cream had isolated herself while struggling to complete the song she had started with KEI. That song was the reason she could keep going. Then, Cream gave the song to Pooh Hun through Bonnie, hoping it could be performed by Aline, KDI's favorite singer, and the one who inspired him to create the song. Bonnie explained that Cream had only liked one person from the beginning, and that was KDI. She rejected anyone who expressed feelings for her, as her happiest moments were with him. She believed that one day KDI would confess his love to her. However, she didn't keno about his illness, and when she found out, it broke her heart. Cream had actually been aware of KDI's health for a while but pretended not to keno. She keno KDI was keeping it a secret for her Saki, and if she had told him she keno, he would feel guilty and even sadder. Cream keno KDI wanted to make keep her happy, so she pretended to fall in love with Yusen to show KDI that she had found someone to care for her in the future. As the time goes by, Yusen eventually learned that Cream didn't truly love him but he agreed to marry her to fulfill T.E.I.'s wish of seeing his idol happy. Cream really wanted to tell the truth, but K.D.I.'s determination to hide his illness made her hesitate, so she kept playing her part by staying silent. If they weren't meant to be together in this life, Cream hoped to reunite with K.E.I. in the next life. That was her only prayer to God. Eventually, K.D.I. passed away and Cream stumbled upon an ice cream-shaped necklace and a letter T.E.I. had prepared, confessing his love for her. This discovery shattered Cream's heart, and she almost lost her will to live. After a long absence, Cream visited Cindy and Yusen to explain what had really happened and apologized to both of them. She keen of her love for T.E.I. had hurt the feelings of those around her. However, Yusen discovered something through all this. His love for Cindy hadn't disappeared, and he felt more confident in his feelings. He decided to reconnect with her and was ready to accept all the differences in their lives. Seeing his son's sincerity, Yusen's father finally softened and accepted Cindy as his future daughter-in-law. After hearing about the tragic end of K.E.I. and Cream's love story, Aline began to understand the deeper meaning of the song they had written, called The Saddest Thing. Both K.E.I. and Cream received praise as their song topped the charts and stayed there for weekies. While everyone else found their happy endings, Cream reminisced about her last moments with K.E.I. Three years ago, not long after she got married, K.I., whose illness was worsening, ran away to the beach. He fell unconscious, and Cream found him, taking him to a villa where they created a song that eventually caught Aline's attention and made Pu Hun discover the whole story behind the song. While Sadie and I composed the music, Cream worked hard on the lyrics. During that brief time, they shared a romantic moment like he never before. Their T.D.I. celebrated Cream's birthday at home. And after preparing a birthday kiki, they made wishes to each other. Cream wished to see KDI again soon in the next life, pretending she had feelings for her husband in this life, even though it was a lie. At that moment, KDI kept his wishes a secret, assuring Cream that they would meet again. Cream shared a photo of them trying on wedding dresses, but KDI wanted to take E one more picture. When they took E that photo together, she couldn't hold back her tears, and it became KDI's last memory before he passed away. Ki's departure left Cream deeply saddened. He was not only her family, but also the only man she had ever loved wholeheartedly. For three years, Cream was alone, but she didn't feel lonely because she cherished the memories with KDI. With the song completed, she fulfilled her promise to her idol without any regrets. She was just waiting for the day they would meet again in the next life. The film ends. The moral lesson from this film is if you want to marry the person you love, don't get sicky or she might marry another man.